Okay, um, question three. Um, at what velocity will an electron have? Um, yeah, so I think if you look at the hint, it'll kind of walk you through. So this is where you actually do have to start using the de Broglie relationship. Um, it, I, yeah, it, I think if you are, the other way will be a bit confusing, especially at this stage. So, uh, so, so let me uh, work through that since this is the kind of the first place where you actually kind of have to use the de Broglie relationship. So, uh, so <laughs> let me work through. And here uh, just, and I think one of the useful thing about question like this is starting to develop a uh, um, kind of a number sense for um, how these um, things look. Because um, when you are thinking of something that has wavelength of 0 0.7 meter, that's a nice macroscopic wavelength that would be kind of a typical wavelength of an audible sound. And um, when we figure out the, the speed for the electron that has this macroscopic wavelength, it should end up being very slow, especially for an electron. So, so that's the number sense I have. And let's work through the numbers to see how that works out. So the, as the hint says, the relationship I'm going to rely on is the de Broglie relationship, that momentum of something, a particle. I, I had a quantum mechanics professor who made up a word. He called it particle. Um, and but I'll just say particle. And whenever I say particle, you shouldn't understand that as excluding the, the wave properties of particle. Um, as you will see, <laughs> as we go through this quantum mechanics, every single particle has a wave property. So when I refer to something as a particle, it shouldn't be understood as excluding its wave nature. So, so P is the momentum of the particle. And that particle will have a wavelength that's associated, uh, that's given by this relationship. Momentum of a particle is equal to Planck's constant divided by the wavelength of the particle. So, um, so I am given the wavelength, so that's a number I can just plug in. And if we were asking for momentum, I would be done, but it's asking for velocity. So I'll need um, one additional step. And this is where I guess you do have to make a kind of a choice. So I, need, I am needing to relate velocity to momentum. And before we covered special relativity, you wouldn't have any, have any hesitation. Momentum is given by mass times velocity and like there's no other things you have to worry about. Um, now, because we covered the special relativity, it should always be in your mind, somewhere in the back of your mind, that you may have to use the relativistically correct expression. Now, what I would normally do and do in most of the cases is Unless I had a strong feeling that um, it was going to be relativistic, I would start out with a non-relativistic expression, most of the times because it's uh, kind of algebraically easier. And then, but what I would always do is once I get the number, I'm going to compare it with the speed of light C. So that uh, this is the condition that I will always check for from now on. I always, whenever I use non-relativistic expression, I want to ensure that whatever velocity I get, excuse me, whatever velocity I get is much less than C. And um, when I check for that, if it turns out to be correct, if this condition turns out to hold, then, then you know I move on. But if this check fails at any time, then I am always ready to fall back on relativistically correct expression. So, so, um, so let me work out this non-relativistic answer and I'll just check at the end, you know, is this answer much less than 300 million meters per second. So um, I guess I can do this all in one shot. So let me just go through the algebra. Um, so put in mv on the left-hand side, 
that gets me mv is equal to h over lambda. So just solving for speed, v is equal to a Planck's constant divided by mass of the electron times its wavelength. And so let me just do this in Wolfram Alpha so that I can do this with as little pain as possible. Planck's constant divided by electron mass times the wavelength I was given, 0 0.7 meters. And, you know, if I wanted the calculator practice, I would look up each of these and then plug it in. So, yeah, so this is what I figured would happen. The speed I get, it's very small, 0 0.001 or four meters per second. And it's uh, very small for uh, really two reasons. Even if I were talking about a macroscopic object, this would be a very small uh, speed. It's like one millimeter per second. Um, and that's one, two. Uh, microscopic things tend to have a very high thermal speed. Like even air molecules have at the regular room temperature, they're moving around at like 300 meters per second and electrons, which is, are much lighter. So, you know, think back to what you learned in physics 4B about equipartition theorem and thermal velocities. The thermal velocities of electrons at room temperatures, um, uh, it's like a Wow, probably more than thousands of meters per second, maybe tens of thousands of meters per second. So compared to that, this is much, much less. So um, it's so much less that it's a kind of unrealistic to get, get that level of speed um, in a laboratory setting. So the wavelength of 0 0.7 meters for an electron that's kind of purely hypothetical. It's not something that's uh, experimentally achievable. Uh, for an electron, there are, I think there can be other, yeah, yeah, for an electron. Uh, so these are, you know, number sense questions. And it's kind of the same deal here. So this, uh, you know, seven, um, uh, seven million meters per second, that would actually be a more typical speed of electron that I think, um, I want to guess that's probably around the speed of electron or, you know, quote unquote speed of electron in a hydrogen atom. Um, so let me plug in the numbers as a matter of kind of a number sense. So it's uh, uh, the exact same relationship that we use again. So let me just write down. I wish I hadn't erased it. <laughs> um, let me write down what we had before. The uh, momentum is uh, momentum of a particle is related to the particle's wavelength by h over lambda. And so this velocity, even though it looks high, when you compare it to three times the 10 to the eight meters per second, this is like, um, what is it? 2% uh, of this. And 2% of speed of light is actually still small enough that I can treat it as uh, non-relativistic. So I'm gonna say my momentum is equal to mass times the velocity. So here, um, solving for lambda, lambda should be equal to, so move it over to the left-hand side, move everything over to the right-hand side, h over mv. Yeah, so let's plug in the numbers. I'll do it on Wolfram Alpha again, since it's easier. <laughs> and I want to get through this relatively quickly. So Planck's constant, leave that alone. Electron mass, leave that alone. Uh, so where I had the wavelength before I want its speed, uh, seven, I'm gonna use E notation, E6 meter per, sec, uh, meter per second. Um, double check to make sure all from have understood you correctly, ah, uh, yeah. And the number I get here, so it's telling me 1.04 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. So in the units of nanometer that I need to move decimal point to one over. So it'll be 0 0.104 nanometer. And I think that's actually the, uh, what we call Bohr radius um, or it's on the order of a Bohr radius of hydrogen. So this is like the size of an atom and um, that, so 
I'm pretty sure when you work out the average speed for an electron in a Bohr model of atom, that uh, um, this is fairly close to that average speed. So, so you know, as, as I was saying, this, these are number sense questions. Um, I want you to get a sense of what the reasonable, realistic numbers are when you are dealing with the quantum mechanics and these microscopic elementary particles.